Hi and welcome to another Seeing Double video. I'm Garden Girl Jen Gallagher and today I'm going to be using some Lawn Fawn products to show you how you can use coordinating stamps and die cuts. And this is a really fun way to stretch your supplies and make the process go a lot easier. So we're going to start with some L Studio pattern paper and this will form the background of our layout. And then I'm going to use the 6x6 paper pad from the Lawn Fawn 6x6 pad. And I'm going to go ahead and attach that here at the top. Then I have a few tags that I had in my stash. One is an old Jenny Bolin tag, and one is a Yellow Dot Fancy Pants tag. And you can see I've even written on the back of one of them. I'm going to adhere them behind the green pattern paper. And I like to create little clusters. Let's go ahead and move this down a little bit more so you can see a little bit more of my tags. And then also to the top I'm going to add a scallop die cut which I have rather punched with this particular scallop punch and I've done it ahead of time to save a little bit of time while we're designing and I'll tuck this in the back here. So we're gonna just tuck this right in the top here. And then I wanna show you how the die cuts and the stamps work together. So the first thing that you do is to use this set, you select a stamp shape from the collection, and then you select the die cut that goes with it. And I wanted to use the clouds. So I have a sheet of craft cardstock, and I have the large cloud, and I have the small cloud. And I'm going to use some brown stamping ink, and I'm going to stamp them onto this craft cardstock. And you could do it in any color that you want. Then after I've stamped them, I will cut them out with a sheet of a pair of scissors just so that I can manipulate them a little bit more easily and then following whatever manual die cut you have you need to follow the instructions typically you will have clear plates and then you will have a platform and this is a new platform from Sizzix that was done for Stampin' Up! but Sizzix has it as well and it's magnetic and what's fun about it is I can stick the die cut on it and it won't move, which makes it nice for a cut like this. So for this particular instructions, it says you lay the platform down first and then you use a clear plate and it's still magnetic even through that clear plate. It's a nice strong magnet. So I will place my die cut down on the platform. Then I'll take the stamped image and place it behind. And I can move it, but that magnetic platform holds my stamped image in place. It's not going to move when I go to cut it. And then per the instructions for my particular die cut machine, I place another clear one on top. And then you just run it through your die cut machine as you would any other die. And I've already done this so that we can move on to the next project, but look for this magnetic die cut pad. It is phenomenal and just makes the process so much easier. So back to the layout, I have pre-die cut a bunch of those craft clouds and we're going to go ahead and adhere them to the layout and I want to craft because it's a little bit different than you'd expect again I used both the small and the large cloud die cut and stamps and just overlap these you could use the stamps by themselves and fussy cut them, and you could use the die cut shapes by themselves. So you have the option of using them however best works for you. From my silhouette machine, I cut this pretty as a picture die cut. And we're going to go ahead and adhere that on top of the green pattern paper. And I do use both my manual and my digital die cut machine on a regular basis. I like using both of them and I use them for different things so I do keep both of them on hand. Then I have some very small little punches 
And I recommend stocking up on some fun punches like this. And from the yellow pattern paper in the die cut, or rather the 6x6 paper pad, I just punched a few little hearts. And then from this triangular green one, I combined two different 6x6 paper pads so that I could get the exact colors that I wanted. So I've die cut, or rather punched some from one, and then I've punched some from another. And we'll just adhere these with regular adhesive. You could also use a glue dot if you prefer that, or a wet adhesive. Then I have a little die cut from Jelly Bean Soup, and it's a little notebook one. And we're going to draw attention to the title. And then I have a button. Now, Lawn Fawn makes fun twines, and this is a yellow twisted twine. And we'll go ahead and add that to the button. And you simply thread it through the button and then tie it into a knot. And I'll go ahead and do that and then show you what it looks like when I'm done. So here you can see it tied in a bow and we'll go ahead and adhere that to the layout with the glue dots so that it sticks a little bit better as it is a heavier embellishment. And then I can trim off any excess of that twine that I want. Now for the photo for this layout, I chose a layout of my, a photo of my daughter attending school, first day of school as a sophomore in high school. And I just picked one photo from our little first day of school photo shoot and it's about five inches to fit the grid that I've created here. Then to decorate this grid up a little bit, I have a fun die cut, and I will make sure and link you to all the products that I use to create this layout. I just like adding little pieces here and there. Then I'm going to add a little bit of washi tape to the photo going to overlap it and tuck it behind. And then we'll add a little bit of wood grain. Just to combine a couple of different styles just to give it a little bit of texture. Then along the bottom here I have a little yellow bicycle pattern paper from their Poppy collection. And it is a script pattern paper, and when you're putting down script, make sure that you put the script facing up the right direction. I have on occasion done it the wrong direction, so make sure you have it facing the way it's supposed to face. Then I'm going to create a little vignette with a couple of different things. I'm going to use a white doily, an American Crafts Hello die cut. I'm going to combine a pennant that I found from a basic gray banner, then some more die cuts that match this notes. And then for a lo the largest pennant in this particular vignette, I took some of that Lawn Fawn pattern paper and I cut it as a pennant. And the first thing I'm going to do is take some of that yellow twine and I will wrap it around the base. And I typically do this three times because it seems to add enough bulk and enough width on the project to really stand out. If you do it too many times, it kind of gets lost. And if you don't do it enough, then, or if you do it too much, it becomes too bulky. So let's hear this under the orange card. Then I'm going to add the Hello die cut and the doily. And again, I'm going to tuck these underneath. We want enough of the doily showing that when I do the hello, it's centered on the doily, so move it as necessary. Straighten out the pennant a little bit. All right, let's go ahead and add this die cut. We just want the hello part showing just below the orange. Then I'm going to combine these pennants and banners that I've collected from my stash. And we're just going to overlap them right over the doily. Look for extras and leftovers that maybe you haven't used up and then just start adding them to your projects. It's a great way to use up embellishment leftovers. So 
you can see I just created a little cluster here. Then from the Poppy Collection from Little Yellow Bicycle, I have some chipboard houses that I'm going to add to my project. And I'm going to do that with some glue dots. And I shot my stash looking for colors that match the Lawn Fawn items that I had already selected. So I knew that this poppy matched very well with this color scheme that I'd selected. And then also from those chipboard elements from Little Yellow Bicycle are some very small little flowers and we'll go ahead and add those as well. Don't be afraid to combine elements. And then from Bella Boulevard I have the Starling Go See Do flag and I thought that was appropriate for my daughter starting high school. We're just going to attach it to the back here. The journaling is printed on craft cardstock and that brings in the browns that you see around the page. And I'm going to cut it as a pennant shape simply by cutting the triangle as I typically do from one edge of the cardstock. Then I'm going to tuck that into the dark green pennant. Then I want to add some decor to it. So I have a label. I have some mini paper clips. And then I also have a Technique Tuesday stamp that I want to use. And we'll start by doing the stamping. You want to do the stamping before you get too much bulk on the page. And one way that you can easily stamp onto a layout that's already been made is to place something with some give behind it, like a little foam base. So I'm going to place this on my clear acrylic block. Make sure it's centered. And then I can ink up the stamp. And now I can stamp it right on top of that journaling. And because I have that foam base beneath, you can see it did a nice job of stamping. It gave me a really crisp and clear image. Let's go ahead and place the label behind the journaling. And then we'll add the little paper clips. And I usually have one of the large curves showing, and then I usually add a small curve. And then at the bottom of this layout here, I'm going to add a decorative border. This is punched with a notebook border punch, and it's from Pattern Paper from the Lawn Fawn Paper Pad. And we'll just tuck this here at the bottom. And then you can crinkle and crease the die cut or punch, whatever you've chosen to use, just to give it a little more texture. So here's the layout that I created using the Lawn Fawn die cut and stamp sets. Let's go ahead and make a bonus project and I'll show you a little bit more how you can use these tools together. So for the bonus project, we're going to make a card. And again, I'm using the Lawn Fawn stamp set as well as the die cut set. Now, one thing that you will want to do when you get your die cuts is that there is a very thin little metal piece that connects each die cut. And if I left them intact, when I went to die cut the large balloon, I would have die cut a small one inside. So you need to pull these apart or you can leave some of them intact. You can do it however you want. So we're gonna go ahead and make our card and I have white cardstock that I folded in half of the card base. I'm using that green pattern paper from the Poppy Collection from Little Yellow Bicycle and that will form the front of our card. I am going to use some more of the Lawn Fawn 6x6 paper pad pieces. And we'll just add them as pennants to the cards. adding some of the same elements that we used on the layout. While you have products out, you might as well create a card or two or a little altered project before you clean up your scrapbook space. 
Now I wanted to show you something different that you can do with your stamps and your die cuts. And one is to stamp the shape on two different kinds of pattern paper. The first is a lawn fawn pattern paper in a small orange print. And I'm going to stamp it again on a larger, slightly darker tone orange print. And this is an older paper from Echo Park Paper. So you can select whatever paper you want. And you can see that I have a lighter one and a darker one. So then using the die cut, I placed it in a die cut machine, use that magnetic sheet again, and that platform holds it in place so it cuts it out, and this is what it looks like. But I didn't want it just plain like this. So I took this shape and I used my scissors and I fussy cut around some of the lines. And you want to get as close to the lines without cutting the line as possible. And what you end up with is several pieces like this. And we're going to put it back together as a puzzle. And I'm going to use a glue pen. So I'll add this center piece that I cut out from the dark orange right in the center. And you want to make sure that the stamping lines realign. So the stamp around here aligns with the stamp in the background. And then we'll add another piece on this side. And you could do a different color or pattern for every single one of these stripes in the balloon. You could use chalk ink to alter it. You could color it with markers. You could use Copics, whatever you have on hand, you can use to dress it up. And there you see it's just a little bit more special. So I'm going to go ahead and layer that onto the card. This is another color or option from the Lawn Fawn Twine. And then we have lots of twine in the two-piece store, so just pick whatever colors you like. And this one changes color from orange to a pink to kind of a fuchsia color. And we'll just tie this off on the card. So you can mix it up by just changing out the twine or changing out the colors and patterns that I've used. So this makes it a little bit more feminine. Then just like I did on the layout, I have stamped and die cut some clouds. And we're gonna go ahead and adhere those to the card. We're going to overlap the clouds on top of the balloon so it looks like the balloon is behind the clouds. And then I have a little yellow button that I have tied with twine and we'll go ahead and add that to the balloon. So you can see how easy the process is when you have coordinating stamps and tools, whether it's a coordinating punch or a coordinating die cut, or even if you're comfortable fussy cutting. It just makes the process so much easier. So there is the card. Let me show you the layout again. I add a little bit of machine stitching to it. I added some along the bottom here as well as I added some to these hearts at the top. Thank you for joining me for today's Seeing Double video. Be sure to visit the Two Peas website for all of the products used in today's video and watch for a new video coming soon.